Welcome to Masters of Business, a show that gives you real-world techniques, cutting-edge strategies, and extraordinary insights for managers and leaders who want to develop the business acumen needed to go faster and farther in their business careers. Now, here's the master himself, Stephen Haynes. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Masters of Business. I'm Stephen Haynes. Um, I have created this show to guide people who work in business on their managerial and leadership journey using business acumen at its core. And today I am really happy to be speaking with Matt Moore, who's a vice president and head of healthcare solutions at Fiserv. And he's worked in a variety of companies, both in healthcare and in financial services. I like to say maybe FinTech. Um, but one of the things that really impresses me with Matt is the fact that he sort of has this mastery of tech and business and things like that. And recently we were talking on the topic of business acumen and how business acumen can contribute toward any person's development as a leader um, and, and, a, and, a, and a good manager. Um, and so what we're gonna do is have a, a short conversation. Now, this is a, um, a newer format of a podcast because part of it is audio, which you can get through normal podcast channels like iTunes and stuff like that. And it's also like a vidcast. And I have no idea what the actual word is um, because it appears on um, a Business Acumen Institute um, YouTube channel. So you can watch us in our informal way um, or listen to us or both. Um, but we'd love you to tell your friends. Anyway, welcome, Matt. Thanks for being here today. Thanks, Steve. Happy to be here. And thank you for including me in the, uh, the podcast as well as the video element. It is, it is my pleasure, and, and I'm, I'm really excited about this. You know, um, we talk a lot about career journeys, and I don't mean it to be like a simple kind of a thing or, or to trivialize career journeys because we all take different paths, but many of us succeed um, in bits and pieces. Um, we fall down a little bit, but um, what are some of the things that you have learned along your career journey that really addresses this idea of, wow, I've really developed this, this business acumen, this, this beast of, of things. Um, what's your secret um, that you can share with our listeners? <laughs> <Or yours? laughs> well, I've, and Steve, thanks. I'm happy to share you know, my journey of kind of building my business acumen. Uh, I, I don't know if what I employ, say, as, as tactics to build business acumen are necessarily a secret, but uh, I'll tell you some of the parts that have been most effective for me. Um, and it's it's funny you say, you know, share some of, some of what I've learned. Well, I've had a 30 plus year career, so I'll, I'll do my best to be concise. Yeah. Um, a, you know, it, it really is, it, it's so much that goes on, like to put it into a, like a 15 minute conversation is like, oh my goodness, how am I gonna actually do this? But, um, you know, it's bits and pieces and there's a lot of spontaneity to this. Like, it's not like a, you know, like a whole roadmap, but um, I'd love to hear what um, some of um, your key learnings have been that you can share with our folks. Yeah, and I, I think actually what you just said with respect to, you know, there's, there's no formula to this, right? So first and foremost, I learned that you have to recognize that, that business acumen, the development of that is an ongoing learning experience, right? And it's throughout the totality of your career. You, uh, you don't come out of grad school and declare, I have business acumen. You don't say over the course of 10 or even 20 years in your career, you know, just say, okay, I've got it. I've got business acumen down pat. And business acumen is a very general sort of a term, right? There's, there's acumen in a lot of areas that can be specialty. And if your career path has taken you into different verticals or different industries, sometimes, and that happened to me once where I, I had a significant change in my career path to go into an entirely different industry, financially related still, but very, very different vertical. Um, it's like hitting the reset button to a certain extent, right? Uh, what, what I know or what I thought I knew a lot of it no longer has a place here in this this new vertical. What was your motivation uh, to switch? Just if you don't mind me asking. Pardon? What was your motivation to switch? It was probably uh, at about that twenty year mark in my career. 
where uh, the most recent move I had made was just a little bit um, late with respect to trying to really take advantage of what I saw a lot of vendors in the marketplace really being able to do. And an opportunity came out of left field um, that really didn't fit me, didn't fit my experience. However, it was something that I personally found somewhat intriguing. Um, so, and it, it was also a big risk for me because I've always been employed by somebody, by a company. Um, and this was to go work with a company on a contract basis for a very short amount of time. Um, I certainly do not regret at all the risk that I took uh, because now I'm in a field that I do not ever see myself leaving with the exception of when I retire. You know, it's really, these are remarkable experiences, right? <laughs> like you can't necessarily make an appointment with it, but certainly when it happens and you say, well, what the heck? And, you know, it's there was some, somebody, I can't remember the artist saying the song about, you know, when one door closes, another one opens, but you don't really know what's behind the door, even after it opens <laughs> until you sort of walk through it a few times. So um, I think that's a, that characterizes it really well. And, you know, you, you look back to, you know, what did I learn? I remember when I was young and cocky, right? And I got in way over my head. I can imagine that. <laughs> you know, I thought I had the know-how, right, to to do whatever it takes you sure. know, to get the job done. Um, and I think getting schooled really by, by others in those situations where I was in over my head, um, you know, early in your career, it's a very powerful learning experience. It can certainly feel very awkward at the time, but it's an incredible learning experience. And you, you, you talked about some of my secrets. Well, again, not so much secrets, but and this will perhaps sound odd to some people, but it's about making mistakes. I made mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. And when I look back and I ask, you know, if I could go back in time and I change those mistakes, would I? Nope, I would take a pass. Making mistakes is absolutely key to building acumen. No, that's very interesting. I, I, I relate to you like completely. No, number one, we have similar types of like pathways that were sort of by accident. And um, the thing that I learned about mistakes, I think people write about it now, they call it, well, you have to make failures. Well, you know, it's, it's not necessarily about failing because a mistake is not a failure. A mistake is right. just, I, it was an error in judgment. Um, I mistook a signal. Um, maybe I made a decision without the proper amount of data. It could have been any of those things. And you, again, you have to sort of step through the door, understand what the outcome is, and then assess it. And I think you mentioned something that was really, really important to you know, it's sort of having people to help you out. And one of the things I, I think is really important is finding mentors, right? And having a mentor to, to speak to, and not all of us are fortunate enough to, enough to have them. Um, and and I, I know, you know, we, we hadn't really talked about some of these things, but have you ever had a mentor that, or, or, you know, temporary mentors that you've been able to count on that sort of brought you through some of these, you know, um, challenging times? I have, uh, I've had a few and, uh, and I've been a mentor in many mm. situations as well. Uh, and, I, I think some people perhaps struggle with that. Um, you know, maybe you're at a certain point in your career or maybe you're at just a certain age, right? I'm 54. Um, I have no issue, no problem telling anybody, yes, I have a mentor. Um, and yes, I am a mentor to a couple of other people as well. Uh, so it's, it's not something where if you are, you know, having that sort of mentor relationship that you can't also be one, but they're, they're incredibly helpful. Uh, and the mentors that I've had over my career were not always necessarily more experienced in some areas uh, versus the experience I had, um, but it was really helpful to have someone that was taking that same journey, that same career journey that I was to, at a minimum, just bounce things off of a, a somewhat objective mind, you know, outside your own company, perhaps, or even in your company, but maybe somebody that's in you know a distant business unit where you don't really deal with them too much. I, I realize that, and and again, it's, we, we've shared similar you know types of experiences. Um, somebody 
when, when I was younger in my career or earlier in my career and people would say, you know, you, you sort of need this formality of mentorship to be a good protege. But to me, it was, there were different people who had different skills or characteristics. And as I learned how to network through organizations, which I thought also contributes to my, my business acumen, if you will, it's, it's the fact that you can find pockets of excellence and as you cultivate these relationships, um, people, some people really great, they take you under their wing, they recognize some things, and you as a mentor to other people find the same kind of things. It's sort of like this um, camaraderie that develops uh, amongst business professionals. And sometimes they are so unexpected that, and the benefit is so um, overwhelming, overwhelming and compelling um, that you wonder, well, how, I, I don't know how I could have done this without other people. And I think throughout time and, and people who have really excelled as leaders have found that these are, are incredible. I'm sure you've heard of people sit, that leaders will say, surround, your, surround yourself with smart people. That's part of it. That's sort of like your advisory council, but mentors become a little bit more personal. Anyway. Yeah, and they're, they're good relationships, and they those are the ten, the type of uh, business relationships that you're going to keep long term, and they can also be very advantageous because as you go different directions in your career and your mentor goes in different directions in theirs, that may open up other doors for you that may not have been there otherwise. There was another topic. When, when you and I were, were speaking, um, we talked about some of your expertise was sort of built I'm going, to, I'm going to paraphrase you, sort of around your curiosity around how a business runs, how a business model is sort of, how, how it comes together to help a company do what it's supposed to do or achieve its goals. Um, and we talked about other things in terms of even relationships and things like that. But I want to talk about learning how a business runs. Like, and, and especially because you've switched domains, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is there something that people who are listening to this could benefit from if they need a little level setting and maybe you know make maybe some new directions? Yeah, and I it's I started my career, Steve, as like an entry level product manager, and without really having the full set of responsibilities that an actual product manager should have, and that was okay because I didn't have the full set of experiences to properly succeed with all those responsibilities. So it definitely entry level. Um, and you know, some of maybe what I'll say might be more applicable to folks that are in my same line of work as a product manager. Um, and it, it doesn't really matter kind of what I'm doing. I always identify myself as a product manager. It doesn't really matter what my title is. I'm a product manager. That, that's what I do. That's what I have done in the 30 year plus career that I have. And you know, when you think about that with respect to running the business, um, there's a lot of aspects there. Um, there's no other job in a company that touches virtually every department or stakeholder like that of a product manager. So as a result, you learn a lot about the other areas of expertise that touch your, your business or your product. So then from there, you know, how did I build my acumen? What behaviors did I employ? And I think probably the, the best piece of, I'll say, advice that I could give someone is ask questions, a lot of questions. And I did that, and then I shut my mouth, and I listen, and then I ask follow-up questions. All throughout, I'm taking a lot of notes. There are few managers, um, notice I didn't say leaders, there are a few managers that will kind of proactively expose, say, a young product manager to all the aspects of running the business. And I think this goes beyond product management, by the way. If you go and join a company, perhaps even as a customer service representative, if you're very young in your career, and that's the entry into this, this company and this industry that you want to get into, it, it will only serve you better to know a lot about all the other aspects of the business so that you can actually communicate with your customers in a very meaningful way. But having had some of those types of managers, I had to aggressively interject myself into the different parts of the business. And I didn't wait for an invitation. I look back and if I had, I know I wouldn't be where I am today. So 
uh, story that I had an early biker. I had a boss once that rarely invited me to learn about the different aspects of the business, right? It was very much, he wanted to keep those all to himself. And, you know, he just, this is what I need you to do. And that's kind of the end of the story. So I learned about, say, certain meetings and I crashed them, right? And I took the initiative to learn and I asked all the stupid questions so that I could acquire all the knowledge I needed to one day run an entire business. And a lot of people are afraid to ask those stupid, you know, what they think might be stupid questions. And you know what, as it turns out, people love to answer questions. People right. love to <laughs> you, you'd be surprised, right? You know, when you said, you said something about, um, you know, really you know, trying to reach out to a lot of other people. Um, th there's one word that I think has been really important and because I spent a fair amount of my corporate years in tech and I'm, I'm a finance guy by trade, all right? And, and a product guy as well. But um, for me, humility, right? Um, the technical community, those people are, I mean, the, the linkage is, is like this. It's so intertwined um, that you, there's got to be some mutual respect, but you you can't be doing everybody else's job, and but you still need to understand what's going on, especially in the technology. I used to say things like, "I don't understand what goes on inside of the black box." So, <laughs> is it possible for you to explain it to me so I could tell my mom? Because that to me became you know the, that's the simplicity I looked for, right? Because if I can help things be sim simple. Um, it, it also hastens communication, but that the way in which you are, it's like, you can't go demand anything, um, but certainly um, asking questions. And I remember I took a, a, some, some class where I, when I used to work at at and and there was a woman giving this, this lecture about how to be effective as a, as a manager. And she said, um, there are four, four words that you can ask as a question that will always be a great level setter. And I said, what's that? She says, I need your help. <laughs> And I never realized the power of that because most people want to help, right? right? And that even goes back down to the whole mentorship that we talked about before, which, um, which I think is amazing. Um, you also talk about like um, relationship building, right? Being, being curious, making mistakes, but then, you know, you still have to build this, this I don't know, these, these resources and these go-to people. Um, what's that like? And for people who are really... Uh, or uh, potentially struggling with this or really want to get their arms around, how do I, as a business person, become a better relationship builder? Is there any advice that you can offer? Yeah, I think so. And this was probably one of the more interesting aspects of, of growing in my career and really back to the core issue here, developing my business acumen. I remember early on in my career, I, I saw a lot of very interesting interactions, some, some very senior sort of managers, product managers that would become very combative with key stakeholders like legal or risk management compliance types, right? Because they weren't getting the answers that they wanted in order to do, you know, X, Y, Z, right? Um, and you also see there's a, there's a classical dynamic, right? And the ever-present tension that exists between sales and the business leader, right? Some people call that a healthy tension, right? So it's, it's always a very interesting and dynamic relationship between product slash business leaders and sales. But I learned really quickly based on what I was seeing and kind of what, what was not happening in the way of progress because of the way that some of these, these people decided to handle those, those situations is to embrace those stakeholders and learn from them. And ultimately, and I, and I did have a genuine curiosity, right? I don't want to be a lawyer, but I have a genuine curiosity about any advice I get from legal counsel. Uh, some of it's pretty you know, straightforward, easy to follow. Some of it, you have to dive in and you say, help me understand why we might take this position. Or you just think about contract negotiations, right? There's so much to learn. Some of the most boring parts of a contract uh, at least that, that most people would think are boring, right, are actually really interesting when it comes back to managing the risk for you or for your company. So it's, it's about embracing those relationships, keeping them around, 
so that I am able to make informed decisions. And then I gradually reduce my reliance on some of those stakeholders. But that's not to say that I reduce my relationship with those stakeholders, right? Yep. So it's quite the opposite. I, I make it a habit of going to R&D leaders, legal experts, compliance folks to vet my ideas early on. Because yeah. I, I actually have a genuine interest in their perspective. We're thinking of offering X, Y, Z. We're thinking of changing a pricing model from this to that. And I'm interested in kind of what you see as opportunities or perhaps risks that are there. And the byproduct of these relationships and the byproduct of maintaining these relationships is one, you've got great colleagues now, but also what tends to happen is some of the things that need to be addressed by those resources tend to get done a little bit faster than they might otherwise. You know, th these are all things. They're, they're the subtexts of these relationships. And when, you know, people are talking about leadership development, they talk about, well, you have to communicate and you have to collaborate. And these are the what's. But when you and I are speaking about this and you're talking about, here's how I went about doing this. And I think even in this conversation, um, you're offering mentorship, as, as I hope I am too a little bit through, through our interactions. Um, yeah. I, I was thinking that you and I probably could talk for hours on, on these topics. And we probably didn't talk about everything I thought we were gonna talk about today. But to me, I, I, and I wanna sort of just, I've been taking notes. And again, for people looking at this on video, this is, this is new because I can't, I can't remember everything. So I still have to look at my pieces of paper, but um, you know, the, for, so for people to excel as leaders, um, there isn't some magical formula. You can't just go step into thing, but there are things you can do on purpose. All right. So purposeful professional development is one of the watchwords, I think, for developing business acumen. And there's a little risk taking. There's some mistakes that we can make. Um, there are people we can um, find or seek that can help us through these things. Um, and, and also to be more proactive, mm -hmm. to not sit by and you know, be told what to do. I think that for people who are emerging as newer leaders or, or managers, being proactive is something that's seen by others. And by, by default, even, it's almost like you're building political capital. And political right. capital begets credibility. Credibility drives influence. Those, I think, are really important things that, while we didn't talk about them explicitly, are things that I pull away from conversations like this. So for, for all of you out there who are listening to this broadcast and who would like to continue to learn and grow from the things that we're sharing, um, I think it's going to be important because the, the ongoing cultivation of business acumen can help any person, any emerging leader or manager to become better and more proficient at business. All right. And I think with that, you can probably succeed beyond your wildest expectations. So I hope you'll share this with your colleagues, um, that you'll tune in next time for another broadcast of Masters in Business. I'm Stephen Haynes. Thanks, Matt. Excellent. Thanks, Steve. You've been listening to Masters of Business with Stephen Haynes, a podcast that captures the ideas and lessons learned from thinkers and leaders in business. If you'd like to take your company to the next level, consider the courses and books from the Business Acumen Institute. To learn more, go to business-acumen.com.